What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing a full year update. It's been one year with my artboard and I'm really excited to share my update on this. So let's get right into it. So the arc board has been an amazing skateboard I've been using to get around in Toronto. It's been so convenient. I actually stopped using my uh, cruiser board, the mini dinghy, because this board is so small and so, so light that I don't mind carrying it all around where I go. It's just really convenient and I don't have to push. With the other cruiser board, I really liked it. It was smaller, it was more compact, but I have to push a lot. And to me, that makes the experience of getting around doing errands more arduous. I don't want to get all sweaty right now. I'm just relaxed using my skateboard and super convenient to bring it anywhere I want to go. Go to the gym, pick up groceries. You know, I'm going skateboarding. As you can see, I have my skateboard. I use it every day to get to my local skate park and it has been just a joy. I can wake up really early in the morning and not feel tired and like have to ride a bike there. The only one downside to having a smaller board like the art board is sometimes it's a little kind of hard on your feet like when there's bumps in the road. What you got to do to mitigate that is find roads that are really kind of smooth. Take the smaller roads like right now I'm on a like not a busy route. Less cars so it's more safe. And another thing is it's a smaller board so it's compared to a bigger board it's not going to be as comfortable. So you have to make your compromises here and there. And for me, I think portability is way more important than having like a much bigger, heavier board because some boards can get up to like really heavy, like 16 pounds. Riding an electric skateboard can be dangerous if the main road has a lot of fast moving cars, potholes, tram tracks, and aggressive Uber drivers. That's why I sometimes ride my arc board on the sidewalk. Another benefit to riding a smaller electric skateboard on the sidewalk is that it isn't as intimidating as, for instance, a bike for the pedestrians. I don't recommend riding on the sidewalk unless the main road is too hazardous because I'm not sure if it's illegal. But if you do ride, do ride slowly on the sidewalk and I'm sure most people won't mind. So one of the things about the arc board is that it only has one speed setting as you can tell on the remote. And it took a while for me to get used to it but I think I finally got used to it. And actually there's some benefit to it because the simplicity of this design makes you kind of always able to go to max speed. So you can control from going really slow like right now or you can just accelerate right away and you can feel the torque kick in. Getting used to the board is obviously difficult because it's a smaller board and it takes some time but I think over a couple of months you get really accustomed to it. I do recommend if you are going to be riding this type of board to use running shoes because running shoes have a very soft cushion at the bottom and it makes it really easy to ride this board and all the, it kind of absorbs all the vibrations on the board. So that's pretty cool. So one of the best things about the arc board is that the, the battery on it is absolutely amazing. The range is super long and you can go really far with this board. I'm really impressed with how good the batteries they use. They're always using really high quality batteries. So one of my concerns using a bell driven motor type of electric skateboard is that I'm afraid that it's gonna snap off and break. But strangely enough, it has not broke at all. And I've been riding this board every day for over a year, putting it through all the pain, more hot weather, cold weather, starting from standstill. And I weigh really heavy, I'm 230 pounds. I'm really heavy of all this gear and the belt motor has not snapped yet and I haven't had to do any maintenance on this board which is pretty amazing in that regard. So in terms of the build quality, I feel like this board can take with sand a lot of damage, a lot of abuse and that just goes to show the quality parts that they're using in this type of skateboard. So you can see the before and after, just after a year, there hasn't been much damage. The only thing that has been affected is the metal belt enclosure but that hasn't actually affected the belt. I haven't had to replace it yet, thankfully. One of the most underrated features of this board is the placement of the power button. You'll be handling the board from the top and you can just turn it on and off. This is really helpful. And also, I love the size. It's so easy to stow it away in my compact apartment. Fantastic all around. 
One of the cool things about this board is that even though it's a single belt driven motor, the acceleration and the braking on this board is absolutely amazing. Uh, the power, I weigh over 230 pounds of all my gear and this thing can push me from a standstill and the brakes are really strong. The acceleration on this board is absolutely amazing. It goes really, really fast and I'm really heavy. So single belt driven motors, they are really fast and powerful. Don't discount them just because it's only one belt and less maintenance, less chance for error, less things for braking because you have less parts. So yeah, I think it's a good compromise between uh, performance and size. One of the annoyances skateboarding downtown in Toronto is that there are a lot of streetcar tracks everywhere and these can be notorious for tripping you over, so I don't even try to run over them sometimes. Sometimes it's smooth, I can go over them, but I usually just kind of kick push over them. These are really annoying, I wish we didn't have these type of kind of streetcar tracks, and if I did have a bigger board, it would probably be easier to go over. But in all honesty, I'd rather just have a smaller board and deal with this nuisance, rather than having to carry a very large and heavy board with me all the time. So I went on the Arcboard website, and I noticed that Arcboard 3.0 the new version is coming out, so I really hope that they re redo this model, this Arcboard Penny board version, because if they don't build another one, I'm going to be really sad. Right now, you can't buy it on their website, and I think they're making some new versions, so hopefully that comes out soon, and we can see what the new version of this type of board will be. And hopefully, you know, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they put out, because I know they do awesome stuff with their design and their engineering. In conclusion, Arcboard is a one-of-a-kind type of electric skateboard. When I first saw their Kickstarter campaign, I instantly fell in love with the idea of a compact electric skateboard that wasn't one of those type of one-wheel, weird-looking type of electric skateboards. I did a lot of research and I strongly believe Arcboard is one of the few electric skateboards under 10 pounds that can carry my heavy weight. Most other types of compact electric skateboards are made of cheap parts or cannot support a lot of weight. Arcboard uses quality parts and this video is a testament to how much abuse their boards can take. In the past, I had an Acton Blink S2, which was a hub motored electric skateboard, and that didn't last very long. I think belt motors can withstand the harsh urban environments such as sidewalks with lots of bumps and vibrations. I look forward to what Arcboard has planned for the future, and I certainly hope they keep the penny size electric skateboard alive. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more future electric skateboard content that I might review. Also, please give a like, it really helps out the channel immensely. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.